1989, Richard Paul Metzger went to rehab for drugs. He was 28 years old. In March of 93, he met Mary Jane Fry. A year and a half later, I was born. As a kid, I always knew my dad loved me more than anything in the world. It didn't matter if he was taking me to parks or amusement parks. I always loved my time with my dad. I was always so happy when I was throwing the football around with my dad, and never as proud as when he gave me big bear hugs after I did something good like performances in school plays, getting good grades, or making safety patrol of the year. Unfortunately, my dad wasn't always able to be that awesome dad I love so much. He had a drinking problem. One night when I was seven, I remember my dad shaking my mom, not like he would shake someone's hand. I was terrified for my mom. I tried to get in front of her to protect her, but my dad just shoved me right out of the way. It was right then and there that I knew he had a problem and needed help. After that, when he was going out to drink, I would tell him that if he didn't stop, I was going to kick him out of the house. My mom was telling him the same thing. He realized he had a problem and he was going to lose the, the people he loved the most. I remember him calling a place and crying to the lady on the phone that he needed help and that he didn't want to be like this no more. I don't know exactly how long he was gone, but I do know that after he got back, he was the dad I loved all the time. He was the dad I always wanted him to be. In the last nine years, he hasn't had a single drop of alcohol. On May 17, 2003, my parents finally got married. Things aren't always perfect. Our family has issues like everyone else, but now I know, no matter how bad things get, my dad will always be there for me. My life today consists of work, my wife and my two boys, who I love dearly. Some things I've done in the past, when my kids were little, I can't bring back, you know, what, what happened back then, but I try to make up to, to them now. If I, if I can say one thing, drinking and drugs almost killed me, destroy, well, destroyed me, but it didn't kill me. Thank God I have another lot, second chance in life. And I have a wonderful wife and family. How did my drinking affect you? I guess your drinking affected me by kind of scaring the crap out of me sometimes when you would shake mom kind of violently. You know what I mean? And they know what you were doing. And sometimes I'd try to go in to protect you, and you just like shoved me out of the way and stuff like that. And I got really scared. So for a couple of couple of years, I guess, I was a little bit afraid of you. How did dad uh, drinking affect you? Nervous, upset, didn't know, had to walk on eggshells, didn't know how he was going to react when he was drinking, didn't know what to say to him. Is there any particular moment that sticks out in your mind? One time when you were little, he was drinking and we got into an argument and he pushed me and I kicked back at him and almost kicked him out the window. Any other moments like that? No, that's the main one that sticks out. Uh, um, how do you think dad, dad's drinking affected me? Mm -hmm. I think it makes you look at the way people drink, that hopefully you're going to learn lessons from him. Is there any other stories that come just like that you think that you want people to hear about that? that um, would change your opinion about doing drugs, like anything, like how you're always telling me stuff that you've done. If you I've done so many things in my life. So not most of my life it was bad. I don't have a good, um, a lot of good positive things, but to say that drugs almost killed me, and one of the hardest things was when my mom threw me out of the house. I was smoking crack, drinking, stealing from my mother. And then when my father passed away, I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> I 
I was living in the street when my father died. If it wasn't for my mother and my Uncle Joe and my Aunt Mary Ann, five minutes before I was leaving where I, so, so to speak, worked, still smoking crack and drinking, I wouldn't have known my father died. I would have found out in the streets. What's your favorite gift from Dad that you've ever gotten from him? You guys. You guys? You boys. Um, well, I mean, that's a good gift, but like something, <laughs> something that, that's... Better be a good gift, man, that's you. Uh, no, I'm just, I know, I know that's what she was going to say, though, when I asked, answered that. Um, something that Dad's gotten you, like, it could be a monkey or... Something just that sticks out in your mind that when you look at it, you always remind you of that dad. My sign he has above in my bedroom, love you forever. It's a slate heart. And, um, and I guess the last thing I'll ask you is, what, what do you want people to get away from this documentary? What do you want people to, uh, well, I'll just ask you that. What do you want people to get away from this documentary about dad? That there is there is hope out there if, but the person you love just stick with them. They have to be willing to get the help they need to, like that hit rock bottom, thinking that we were we were going to leave him if he wouldn't stop drinking, and just keep offering words of encouragement. There's help out there. Dad's got it. Before Dad's one of Dad's favorite things to say to go for help is the Salvation Army. Um, there's all kinds of help out there. You just gotta look for it, go for your friends, talk to people, and make sure you have good family support or if no family, at least friends that will support you and help you. And um, I guess the last thing I'm gonna ask is, what things, um, what do you want the message to get out about Dad? I know I said about the documentary, and him. What do you want to get out of Dad? Dad. That he's a better person because he doesn't drink. What do you like about me as a dad? I guess, after, well, what do I like about you as a dad? I guess after you got out of rehab, you were just the dad that I always wanted you to be. Proudest moment as a father. Well, I'd have to say there's two proudest moments the day Garrett came into life. June 10th of 1994. And then the little one came along November 14th, no, sorry, November 13th, 1997. They're my two biggest joys in the world. And I do anything for my children. Whatever, whatever, they've been good kids today, bad kids today or tomorrow. I love my kids and my wife. My dad tells me about his mistakes to teach me about the tremendous power of drugs and alcohol, but I'm also learning about the even more tremendous power of love. If you have a loved one who needs help with an addiction, my family hopes our story can inspire you to go help them get the help they need. One other time with Garrett, we were at the carnival. Dad, that's all he said to me. I grabbed the sausage from his hand and ate it. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot of good memories with my family.